and it's a new earth. And I would like to share with you one of the time-honored uh, pieces of prose. It's called One Solitary Life. Are you familiar with it? It's one of my favorites. How do you explain the greatness of the man who we celebrate every Christmas and every Easter? He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked as a carpenter in a shop with his father until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held office. He never owned a home. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. Although he walked the land over, curing the sick, giving sight to the blind, healing the lame, and raising people from the dead, the top established religious leaders turned against him. Imagine that. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was spat upon, flogged, and ridiculed. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, the executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth, and that was his what? His robe. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave to the pity of a friend. Nineteen wide centuries have come and gone. We'll say twenty by now. And today he is one of the central figures of humanity and the leader of an amazing movement. All the armies that ever marched and all the, the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man and woman upon this earth as that one solitary life. It was Jesus of Nazareth. It was not Jesus Christ. He came into the planet, Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary and Joseph with the immaculate thought. And how we hold this in metaphysics is that we are dying daily to that which no longer serves us. When the Apostle Paul said, I die daily, he was saying, I died to that which no longer serves me, so the truth of me can arise triumphant and victorious. I and my Father, Mother God, are one. And we believe in new thought, that there is one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, and that life is our life right here and right now. We tap into this energy. So... On Easter morning, as we arise with the energy of knowing that when Mary went to the tomb, it was empty. And she was amazed. And she saw this figure, this luminous Christ figure. And he said, Ah, do not touch me. I have not yet ascended unto my Father. And she went to the apostles. And they said, well, and she said, he was not there. He is risen. And what does that mean to you and I? It means that every time we get it, every time that we move to the next level of our spiritual unfoldment, that that physical tomb is empty, for we have transcended the everyday experience. We have moved beyond that. See, life is a spiral, and we wonder why do we get such sketchy results in our life? Because when we are not committed to our spiritual life, we're on again, off again. Buddha said that life is like hands clapping. I've got it! Oh, I'll never lose it. Oh, I and my father are one. And then we, you know, think things are great, God, you know. We're out there in the world doing our thing. We don't have it. We have it. We don't have it. We have it. We don't have it. We have it. We don't. But when we are committed to our spiritual life, life is great. One great applause because we're always touching the seamless garment of truth. We've got it. And we move on the impetus of this energy where we have it. 
And we know that we know that we know. And those moments of lower energy, we don't beat ourselves up. We have compassion for ourselves as we would for another. And we know that this too shall pass. That God's truth and beauty and aliveness, all those things will never pass. And when we were giving out the 200 Easter gifts to the elders at Premier Elder Home yesterday, one gentleman was in the bed and, and our Alice gave him his beautiful uh, Easter bag and all the ribbons and, and he said, oh, I can't take this. And I said, why is that? He said, I'm a Jehovah Witness. We don't believe in all these holidays and all these gifts. And I said, well, you know what? God loves you and just take it as some sort of a springtime acknowledgement. And he said, well, the egg is new life. I said, we believe the egg is new life. And he said, and the rabbit also is spring and it's energy. And I said, yes, it really is. And I think it's wonderful that you know that. And as we walked out, he was still talking as we were walking out. But the truth is, the universe is ours. It's already been given. When we think that we can't accept something, the truth is, we open the space to allow God to do what God does best. We honor each other's beliefs. We can hold it and frame it differently and receive it because there is a law of circulation and correspondence in the universe. And when we open to it, something amazing absolutely happens. So we come from that space of God. And Jesus healed the sick because he first what? He tapped into the energy of his higher power. He tapped into the energy of I and my Father are one. And he tapped into that. He didn't go around saying, oh my God, you're a leper. How, how long have you had leprosy? How far advanced is it? Oh my God. Well, we'll see what we can do here. No. He just called on the energy of the universe. He went and the most communicable disease of his day was leprosy. And he just walked through those, those uh, uh, leopard dens because they, what they did is they shoved everybody in a cave and, and kind of like a little cave den. And he was unmoved by any of that. And he knew there was only friendly bacteria. When somebody says, oh, I've got such and such, I, you know, I always put my hand out. I don't receive that. We do things in our own life when our, we call it our resistance gets low. It's because we're receptive emotionally. We've reacted to something outside of ourselves. When the woman who suffered for 12 years and she thought, if I could just touch the seam of his garment, I'll be healed. I know it. I know it. And he came through like some great superstar. And she reached out, and she missed him. But she got the seamless hem of his garment. And she was healed from 12 years of suffering. And she bowed down to worship him, and he said, Why callest thou me good? There is only one good. And that is God, flowing through each of us, is what he meant. He said, It was your faith that made you whole. It was your faith. You did it for yourself. Acknowledge yourself. He didn't set himself up as the great exception. He was the great example. And he had energy, and he laughed with his friends, and he, he changed water into wine. What did he do? He spiritualized it. He spiritualized the energy. Everything in the universe is energy. Remember what Tesla said. If you want to know the secrets of life, Think in terms of vibration, frequency, and energy. These are the sound waves that move through our universe. And if we don't vibrate at a certain frequency, we know it. And we don't have to make it wrong. It's just not a vibrational match. And if it's not a vibrational match, it's not good or bad. It just is. Fritz Perls, who wrote Games People Play, many in the 70s, he said, I am not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you are not in this world to live up to my expectations. I am I, and you are you. And if by chance we find each other, beautiful. And if not, it can't be helped. It's not a vibrational match. Einstein, who is the creator of relativity, E equals MC squared, 
when they made the nuclear bomb, he got together a peace commission of, of scientists and to have a nuclear free world when he saw potentially what the nuclear bomb could do when on Hiroshima. And he did not feel good about it at all. And someone said, well, do you believe in God? And he said, well, I want to know the thoughts of God. The rest are details. <laughs> Think about it. The rest are details. And so here was an amazing, amazing inventor. And he was a musician and he was a poet. And in a time when the Nazi regime started to go in, here he was in Germany. He had to get out of Germany. He came and he sought uh, asylum in the United States and was so beautifully received in the United States. And it, such a genius. Everything is energy. And that our thoughts travel at the speed of light. And that who could have said, someone asked in an interview uh, to a gentleman who wrote about Einstein, do you think that if he'd had a computer he would have discovered it sooner? And he said, no, because he had to go through the same equations. I probably wouldn't have had so much scribbling, but, you know, the computer may have, have gotten him there maybe a little faster, but I doubt it very much, because that's the way his mind worked. And he said, what is life and death but illusions? The eternal now is what we live in. So when we look at this moment, the point of power is always in the present moment. And when we crucify the ego, and on our right side, that thief says, truly, you are the Messiah. I get it. I know who you are. And what did Jesus answer? Today thou be, will be with me in paradise, because you get it. You understand the inner workings, the esoteric workings, because each of us, we go through our initiations. And when we pass our initiations and we come out on the other side, it's amazing. It's amazing how forgiveness works. Because when we know we are healed, when we can wish the person who we feel has betrayed us or wronged us, when we can wish them well. When we can wish them well. And realize we would not be who we are without those experiences. That's why I love our way of life is that we go through our trials, our tribulations, and we come out on the other side, and we can serve one another at such a deep level. Mary went into the tomb and it was empty. He is not here, for he has risen. He has risen above it all. That he could heal Lazarus, who'd been supposedly dead for three days. Think about it. And all he did is summon the life force energy and say, Lazarus, come forth! And that life force energy came forth. There was energy. There was aliveness. There was casting off what no longer served him. And he came forth. I love it. My favorite Sunday school story, and you know that I volunteered for 10 years at the La Crescenta Church uh, in, in, uh, uh, next to La Cunada, and we were there, and I was first teaching Sunday school, and then we graduated to the youth group. Then we took the youth group on trips. Can you imagine taking 20 teenagers you know, up to a Silomar and longhouses? It was quite, quite an experience. And uh, my husband was up like every hour, you know, saying, well, have it quiet now, it's 2 a.m. And all the things that we do, you know, as we learn and we grow. And one of the Sunday school, we were telling the story uh, about Easter and about Lazarus. And Neil said, who, he said, who knows that story? And one little, you know, kid, he absolutely knew the story. And he said, Jesus just went up to that that tomb, and he said, Lazarus, come forth with your hands up. <laughs> he knew. He knew. So when we can come forth out of that which no longer serves us, when we can energetically move past it 
and we can be consistent in our life. And I want you to know, one of the keys to life is consistency. When we really get it, that when we are consistent, the universe is consistent with us. And I love this story that we can absolutely know the truth about something and we can experience that healing. And when we tap into Christ consciousness, something happens. When Bill Wilson went everywhere to every psychiatrist that you can think of known to man, he also went to Carl Jung and he said, how can I heal myself of alcoholism? Carl Jung, the great Austrian psychiatrist said, I can't. You have to have your own spiritual experience. And this man was so addicted and he said that night he laid down and at 3 a.m. a presence filled the room. It was a healing presence. And when Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk, he picked up his bed of addiction and he walked. And he walked into the world serving others out of his own experience. When we can serve others out of our own experience, when we can come forth in a greater way, something begins to happen. So let's each of us commit, today is a new beginning, that we are the resurrection and the life, that we release what no longer serves us, and we allow the truth of us to come forward in such a great way, that two or three are gathered here, and that we lay those requests on the altar, that some of us are filling out prayer requests, and in the filling it out, we've released it, so that the healing energy of the universe fills the room with light. And we pick up our bed and walk. And we walk tall. Because it is our faith that makes us whole. It is our decision that makes us whole. It is the reality that can say every single day of my life, I got out of bed this morning. I made a conscious decision to be here. I am the resurrection and the life. I and my Father, Mother, God are one, and that makes all the difference. The Christ in me salutes the Christ in you, and I know the Christ in me, in you, salutes the Christ in me. And that when we come to that place, where if you are in that place in you and I am in that place in me, there truly is only one of us. It's about Christ consciousness, the Buddha nature, the holy I am presence, whatever we choose to call this energy, to know that it is palpable, it is real, and it goes before us and prepares the way. Because where are we going? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. And so it is. God bless you.